My name is Cabrina. My name is Sterling. My name is Max. My name is Finn. Makanke Yantuda. My name is Lee. My name is Mikaela. My name is Ashley. My name is Allison. Sime Benel. My name is Mo. My name is Andrew. My name is Lamar. My name is Kevin. And we, and we, and we are the crew of the 2014 SPNM SPN Youth Intern Program. One of the great things about Minnesota is that there are many diverse populations here, but that also means that there are many people struggling to preserve their culture as they adapt to life in a new country. To learn more about assimilation and preserving culture, we spoke to Sing Lee, a graphic designer who is currently working with the Minnesota Historical Society to open a Hmong cultural exhibit. My name is Sing Lee. I was born in Thailand in the refugee camp in Sen Kham um, in 1988. My family moved here in 1991. For, for personally myself, I mean it was hard trying to look at another person and, and try to be within their shoes because there was not a lot of people who looked or spoke like you. I'm currently working at the Minnesota Historical Society as an exhibit designer. Assimilation is always very hard and it's always very quick. It's, you know, culture disappears in one generation. My, my assimilation is very different from my parents' assimilation. It creates this, this huge wide gap of misunderstanding for many refugee and immigrant groups, we don't communicate the best with our elders, and that becomes, you know, very problematic and affects, you know, not only just health, but the social welfare of our own community. For our documentary, we chose to focus on the Karen community in Minnesota. The Karen are a small but growing community, and many Karen refugees are currently adapting to a new life. We visited the Karen Organization of Minnesota to learn more about Karen culture. Ataku, KOM's manager of the Youth and Social Services, gave us an overview of recent Korean history. My name is Ataku. I supervise uh, youth program and refugee social services, as well as community health education. During the Second World War, the, the Korean supported British uh, forces to fight against the Japanese, and the Burmese supported Japanese uh, forces to fight against the British and at first the British uh, promised the Korean that if we fight for them they're gonna give us independence but after Second World War when they left instead of giving the independence to Korean people they gave it to Burmese which is a group that fight against them during Second World War. Korean felt abandoned and betrayed by their former allies uh, British that they supported during the Second World War. And the Burmese has been uh, persecuting uh, and oppressed systematic rape and killing a lot of Korean people so that we cannot survive in Burma. Uh, the Korean people has to flee from the, the country uh, Burma to Thailand as a refugee. The resettlement project opened in 2000, so a lot of people, a lot of Korean people from refugee camps uh, resettled to uh, different countries. We are also curious about the difficulties of moving to a new place and what are the most important things to remember about Korean culture. We talked to a few staff members at the Korean Organization of Minnesota for their thoughts. <laughs> ว่าก็บาเคลยูโกมีกีโกบิโยซีดะพามีกีเลยเฮดูดะซานีดะกีกอเวดะเลตะเลตะกีเนาะปะกาตะอูบะเบมีเอโดฮาบะบะเดเบ
Soy Soko, ni Kimida, Madaga, Watagala. And a lot of time, our kids tend to forget the culture. But some of, most of the time, the culture that they tend to uh, forget is a really uh, good culture that we have to keep. Leptilov Kobu, Lepo Bane, Pudipota de Pane, Tinya Paketa to Kitabwa. เพปเลตอกิโลเพปออออเซกตอนนี้เป็นบาเลตอตอนนี้เป็นเมื่อปัสสุกิตาปวาติปาออวีมาเพื่อพุทธศาสติปาปอแลเมญาดาดิเนต
They offer food and free transportation here. It shouldn't be that hard of a decision. <laughs> like even if I wasn't getting paid to do this, I would do this and still have like the time of my life. So you should do it, definitely. Yeah, this is hard, man. Is it done? Thank you. More peace. We as a group took a trip to the new Arlington Hills Community Center to learn more about what happens there. We asked Kathy Corum from St. Paul Parks and Rec about Arlington and her life growing up on the east side of St. Paul. This is what we found out. My name is Kathy Corum. I'm the Deputy Director for the Department of Parks and Recreation in St. Paul. I've always thought it was just the coolest place to work is in public service um, because I get to give back to my community some of the things I feel like my community gave me as a young person um, growing up. I was on the east side in the, in the 60s and 70s and early 80s. It was uh, primarily white, um, primarily nuclear families where there was a mom and a dad and two or three or four or five kids. We went around, we got places on our feet, on our bikes, um, and on our roller skates. Our world was kind of eight or ten blocks square. I think uh, the things that have changed the most are that the um, population has become more diverse. The racial and ethnic makeup, um, how much people move around, um, the fact that maybe the rec center, the church, or the school isn't one of the central kind of anchors in the neighborhood anymore, and then the makeup of the families that live there. So those are all big big shifts, I think, in um, how that neighborhood worked. The Arlington Hills Community Center that just opened a couple months ago um, was probably seven or eight years in the making. So there was gonna be this big, grand facility that met a lot of different needs all in one space. We knew it would be busy. We wanted it to be busy. We wanted there to be kids there all the time. Um, there were a lot of people that helped me grow and develop as a young person and many of them were in public spaces. It, it's unfortunate that some of the stories that have come out about Arlington Hills are that it's a place where there's trouble, it's a place where um, kids fight, but in some cases the people that are involved in the storytelling haven't even been to Arlington Hills Community Centers. Um, and that's troubling because what's going on inside the walls is some really cool programs. I think a lot of times with media, it depends on who owns the story, who's telling the story. And what's really important to me is when there's negative stories about something like Arlington Hills Community Center, I want to make sure that we find a way for the counter narrative to be able to tell the other part of the story that's, uh, that's happening there. With all that in mind, we asked both youth and staff their perspective on how Arlington Hills is perceived by others. Arlington Hills in general, I would say the neighborhood, and therefore by default, this community center, simply because it's a part of the neighborhood, has a reputation for um, struggling with violence. But I know like the history um, behind the, the center is very, a lot of it's very negative. Yeah, a bad reputation. Most people outside of the outside of the rec center would think of it as, you know, a place of trouble. People view Arlington Hills as very violent and that all, most of the kids here cause trouble. I see a lot of people bash on it, mostly about how bad it is with fights. I feel like everybody look at us the wrong way because we're usually the ones bringing the like violence and the disrespect. I think they see them as what they usually are told about how youth are a lot of trouble. That something else, what you're not. But when they actually get to know the place, it's not as bad as people may think it is. As you know, if you're not really there to see any particular thing happen from beginning to end, you don't really know what's going on. So with all of the negativity in mind, we also found out some pretty cool stuff that's going on at Arlington Hills. 
Um, the good thing about this site is that we're both a uh, rec center and a library. We have all kinds of different programs. Sports, we have open gym times, we have reading programs, we have... The Create Tech Studio for teens to create all kinds of different things. Drawing and animation and di digital illustration. Workshops that uh, help youth uh, work with and play with technology. It's audio production and uh, video production. A couple of very regular young ladies coming in and learning how to sew. One week they made disco balls for the room out of broken CDs. What we're doing is actually really great here. Yeah, it's fun. You know, I, I just met some new kids out there and all that stuff, and we clicked, you know? They think it's like a chill place to just come and hang out. Being a, a Create Tech studio and playing a PS4. A place for um, youth to gather and be involved in multiple different you know, activities when they come in here. A hangout place for you to come to. A place to play basketball and hang out and stuff. My, favorite, my best memory is when my best friend first came up here, you know, Cabrina, yes. When she came up here, we hung out. One of my best memories here are hanging out with the people that I already know, you know, meeting new people, that's fun. After the trip, we came to the conclusion that Arlington Hills isn't as bad as it has been portrayed in the media. In fact, we found that Arlington has lots of wonderful programs in both youth and staff who care about the future of the East Side. We've also learned that there's two sides to every story. I think it's a really complicated question, but I think there's a lot of things. You know, obviously there's external beauty and internal beauty. Um, I always think of like the beauty as something that catches your eye, that sparkle, that glow, um, something that kind of gives you that warm smile or comfort. I would define beauty as your inner light. It's how you shine out to the world, it's how you present yourself, but it's also how you treat others, and how you treat others shows your beauty. It's who you are as a person. It's how you perceive life. It's everything about who you are except for your looks. My definition of beauty is someone who is happy with themselves. The expression of your particular individuality. I'd say my definition of beauty is being secure in yourself. It's in the inside. Beauty is just being a good person on the inside and out. It's not always about what, count, what counts on the inside and not on the outside. What you cherish about your appearance before people. Uh, beauty people can take beauty as special appearance. People can take beauty as how you live your life, character, and other things. Someone that excites me. Beautiful, gorgeous. Someone that looks good, a good smile. Beauty is something that captures your attention and keeps you there. Anything sensory, sound, taste, touch, sight that makes you feel peaceful and calm inside. Beauty is in the heart. It starts with the heartbeat. It beats one second at a time. That's how long it lasts. My definition of beauty is the believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
and whoever is filled with his spirit and desires to do his will. We are the most beautiful people on the planet. We are what makes this planet keep spinning. Um, I believe that beauty would be the passion and empathy that a person has for the world and the people around them. Beauty is whatever you make it. Beauty is everything that you see. I see beauty in just about everything that I, that I look at. I see beauty in this park. I see beauty in people. Um, I see beauty in that lovely stream behind us and the sounds that it's making. You probably saw that I was soaking my feet there, which my feet hurt. So, um, I, I think beauty is everywhere. I think beauty surrounds us if, if one takes a really good look at it. Attractive. Like you. Think of all the beauty still left around you and be happy because happiness is beauty in itself. Um, I think giving homeless people money is good and like if you have it then why not give it to them? It doesn't matter like how much it is. I help them sometimes too. I give them some money. They need a job, right? I do not give money to homeless people. I don't give money to poor people. Why? Because I got to make money on my own just like they should, right? I would prefer to give money to an organization that would uh, kind of more take care of the systemic uh, issues of homelessness. It is a good idea to give money to the homeless. Honestly, I feel like you should give money to homeless people. Some people 
need it and some people don't, you know. It all depends on what you feel in your heart. You know, that's, that's, that's what I feel. So our tax dollars do give money to the homeless on a every paycheck basis. And so the, the problem is the homeless don't need money. The homeless need someone to care about what their real issues are. Nobody should give them money when they're standing on the street with their signs. Because when you give somebody something for nothing, they're not working for it and they didn't earn it. Anytime you can share your blessings, you should share it. You know what I'm saying? If you got it to give, give it. You know what I'm saying? Don't judge what that person has been through, what they going to do with your money. I don't mind it as long as they're using it for a good for what they need. A lot of the homeless people do ask for money for their addiction, drugs, or alcohol, but there are people that really are homeless that need money. I'm against it because I think they are capable to find a job and make a good life for themselves. We're all supposed to be here in this world to help each other out, serve each other. Honestly, even if it's your last, I feel like it should be given just off the simple fact, like, you never know what that person went through to get to, you know what I'm saying, that point in life. Growing up, like, I didn't have no one. My mom put me out on the streets when I was like 11 years old. Put your feet in their shoes just for a moment. Would you want someone to help you? I'm kind of homeless too right now. I was in foster care for five days, homeless for seven years, um, and I never really got a handout. I have two kids I gotta support and a third one on the way. And if you have compassion on not only homeless people, but anybody who will ask you of your help, when you need help, you'll get it. Anybody who talks bad about homeless people, they walk by them, don't even talk to them, because you know what, those people, they don't know. People say to me, you, you're, you don't look like you're homeless. They say, what's homeless supposed to look like? Really, you know, God, God bless all, everybody. The transition from youth to adulthood can be an ambiguous experience, but many people learn to feel empowered when they get their first job. What was your first job? My first job was emptying wastebaskets and making hangers for my dad in his tailor shop in laundry. I had two first jobs. They were kind of at the same time. I, one of them was with St. Paul Pioneer Press. I, I worked at a convenience store in Korea. Um, my first job was actually tutoring, um, math tutoring. My first job was uh, working as a cashier at, or as an associate at Panera Bread Company. My um, first job was UPS. So my first job was uh, working on a farm in, uh, out in rural Minnesota, and I worked picking rock. First job was working at a boys and girls club. My real, my first formal job was at a grocery store and I was a bag boy. Technically, it was a summer job during college and I put plastic bags over grape roots. Uh, my first job was um, uh, working in my parents' uh, clothing store. I'm now working my first job at Como Pool. This summer, Andrew, Ashley, and Sterling learned about employment opportunities for youth in St. Paul. We talked to Trenton Hentzpeter from Right Track, the organization that we go through for our jobs at SPNN. Right Track is the City of St. Paul's uh, youth employment program. Employment for everybody is important. Um, you know, as you get older, you have to work to earn a living. Um, I think Right Track is a great program to get basic um, first time work experience. We wanted to learn more about youth employment, so we went to visit Youth Express, a business that teaches about youth entrepreneurship through Express Yourself Clothing and the Express Bike Shop. But Youth Express uh, has actually been a program uh, since 1981. Uh, our focus now is mainly on um, providing first job experiences for young people in a, in a kind of a small business environment. Youth Express is my first job. There's four girls that found the store to learn about fashion, what it's like to work in a small business, and also just retail in general, because we're doing board folding, store set, visual, all of that. We have the apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship program happens every six months, and they rotate during that six months, they're taking classes, and they're also working at the store. 
We were impressed to see the youth at Express Yourself Clothing do everything from set up the mannequins to work the cash register to creating in-store displays. So at Youth Express, the youth learn a lot of different skills. We support this by taking in donated bikes, refurbishing that, them uh, or recycling them, uh, reusing the parts, and um, apprentices learn about not only bike mechanics, but also uh, the ins and outs of running a small business. Youth Express hires on, only youth apprentices between the age of 14 and 17. Um, in the past several years, the, a lot of the job market for entry-level jobs or, or um, you know, minimum wage jobs has been taken up by older people. At Express Bike Shop, everyone helped each other to keep their store running smoothly. Oh, well, this actually, this is my first shop at the Express Bike Shop. They help because I'm, I'm a person who, like, failure is, like, horrible. Like, I can't fail at all. But then, they, like, they pick me up when, like, I think I did something horribly wrong. And they teach me and they, you know, challenge me a bit. So, you know, it kind of helps me improve. First and foremost for us, because we operate businesses and we're business, we're local businesses um, in the community. Uh, I think one of the things we stress the most is, is simply one of the ways you can serve your community is providing a quality service, being a welcoming place to, to local residents who want to come in and, 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 and shop at local businesses and, and kind of create create kind of a community space in that way just by being a welcoming local business. Each of those cases when we started the new business, there's always been a group of young people that have worked with us. Uh, right alongside us to develop the business plan. We've had young people that have dedicated themselves to that process. Um, I think that's, that's probably one of the big ways uh, that, that young people have contributed here. Finally, we visited Stepping Stone Theater, a program that employs youth who want a career in the performing arts. We use uh, youth from all walks of life and kids come to us whether they're interested in theater or just being part of a, a group. I think there's lifelong skills of uh, teamwork, uh, creative thinking, uh, uh, working together. So we bring in young people to do everything from readings of the new works that we're doing. So they'll come in and, and workshop them. Our mission at Stepping Stone is to build self-esteem and self-confidence as well as a sense of community through the theater arts. One thing that is unique about our theater is that we don't have a lot of adults performing in our productions. Um, and then going even further than that, I have um, teens working as counselor interns. Yes, um, Stepping Stone did prepare me for careers in the art. I believe that Stepping Stone's mission is to build confidence in kids. And it helps me Make, I mean, it helps me create the better us that's coming. Youth are often overlooked for employment. But these job opportunities are and will continue to empower youth. If I had one day left to live, I would probably rob a bank <laughs> and go to an amusement park. I would go to Disney World. Evie. I'd want to go scuba diving. I would spend it going shopping. I'd do an improv ever performance and wear a blue polo and khakis at Best Buy. I would gather all my friends and fellow bronies and watch My Little Pony all day long. I'm gonna start partying. I'm gonna fly around. As much as possible. Uh, me and my three daughters would go to Disney World and get on all the rides and make us puke. I just want to spend it with my best friend, who's my husband. I'm going to spend it with my family. I go talk to my family. Say hi and bye to all my relatives and everybody that I cared for. I would spend it with my kids and my wife. Just hanging out, having fun, relaxing. I'd get in touch with some people, say goodbye. I would spend that time with my family. 
with my time, I would go home and spend it with my family. I would gather my friends and family and tell them how grateful I am for their love and affection. I would spend that time with my grandchildren, one day, just one day, so I can just see their faces and hopefully I remember uh, them. I think I, I like reflecting on all the positive things I've done. I would run to Lamo and gather all my family and we would have one last family reunion together. I would probably go back to Thailand and spend the time with my family, my best friend, and someone that I love. I would spend the time outside with my family and friends and people that I love, and preferably near a body of water. I would spend it outside. Travel somewhere interesting, I guess. I had tried to bike as far as I could. I would just go on a magical adventure. So I would go out there and I would live my life. Actually, I would, I would even, you know what I would do? I would give my phone to a homeless man. Thank you. Have a great day. When we went to the Arlington, uh, Arlington Hills Rec Center, they had pretty nice stuff for there, and then we got to like see the environment. Probably the check-ins because they get to find out everything about everyone. Um, I like to go to um the the music room. How to work with the cameras because I think everybody should like I think it's a skill that everybody should learn. Having new friends and like learning how to work with cameras. Getting to work with the cameras. Because I love cameras so much. Mainly because I'm thinking about going into movies and filming. 50 people, one question. So one thing, I do like how we're actually stepping out of the building. So since we got to pick our own question and... It definitely was a big difference than, I'd say, a seven hour cubicle station. It was fun. The most important thing is? Um, probably how to get comfortable with the camera. I had no experience coming in, so they taught me a lot of basic stuff that I didn't even think about before. Um, how to take a video, and how to zoom in, zoom out, and those things. The most important thing that I learned is actually what's on the camera. Definitely how to work a camera. I mean, if I don't know how to work a camera, then I don't, you don't have a documentary is that you need to be more, is that you need to be very persistent when trying to get people to interview. How to work with people that don't, that are different. I think like how to work with other people because you work with other people on editing and camera work and things so you really have to coordinate what you want to do and that's a good life skill.